Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we're going to work on the Crochet Buffalo Plaid Afghan. This is a real optical illusion. This is a doozy. I had this at the Canada 150th celebration. People ask me how it's done. I'm like, I don't know. I don't get it. So today I'm going to take the mystery out of this. This isn't classified as an easy pattern and once you understand what the designer has done, you're going to say, whoa, that is super, super cool. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound, it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So today's pattern is just one page. So that kind of confused me right off the top because I'm thinking this is going to be very complicated and it's not. And in the actual fact there's only two instructions of rows and then there's a vertical surface layer. And I'm thinking what is the surface layer? I don't really get that. So today you're going to notice that there is going to be some interesting work and you'll see red and black being interwoven with each other. And this is not dragging the yarn through like tapestry crochet. This is surface overlay. So let me take you to the sample that's red underneath and take the mystery right out now. So here's the exact example that we have here and what we've got is that I want you to visualize this is in rows. So you got red row, you got a black row and a red row and etc. And you're thinking to yourself okay well you got black dragging through there. How did the black get there? That's done afterward. And how did the red get into this section over here where there's black? That's done afterward. And in fact if you follow it, so follow this red line all the way down right to the base to right. So this whole red line is added afterward. Yes, all of it. Just like you see here. This black line is added the whole thing right up to the top of the afghan. So what you're looking at here is grid work that is happening and it's using split half double crochet which I'll explain in a bit. But what you're going to eventually have here is that you're going to have mesh work that looks like this. So you can see that there's holes in between the work just like you see here. So what happens here is that we're going to be able to get this to go bigger and then at the end we're going to do some surface overlay. So we, if we surface overlay with the orange here, the orange looks like that it's finishing up the orange and then it's going to look like it's dragging partially through the red and then back to orange. So when you see it here, the, the mesh work was here. So I know it's hard to see with the black but this whole line here was holes that were in it and this was done afterward to fill it in. So the red really gives you an indication on how that's done too. So this red is dragged in. So every other one that you see is the mesh work and the ones in between are the surface overlay as you go back across. So the long story short is that you're going to create the mesh. So the surface overlay has not been applied to this particular sample. But what happens when you provide the overlay, the surface overlay, watch what I'm just going to demonstrate it just with a piece of string. It's not done this way. But watch. See? When it's passing over the red it fills it in and when it's passing over the orange it looks like it's a line. And the same thing would go then if it was orange doing the exact same thing. So if it's orange and going across it looks like it disappears into the orange here but then it creates the line that you see up here. So it's actually a really neat effect when you're going to work on this. So let's uh, begin today and let's start working on the mesh. I'm going to use um, half split half double crochet in order to get you to do this. I'm also going to teach you how to weave in your ends because you will have uh, ends to weave in whether it's the beginning and all the surface overlays that go in. The surface overlays always start at the bottom so I marked it with the stitch so, uh, stitch marker so I remember to go up from the bottom when I go to do this. But I'm going to show you how to make the mesh first and then we'll do the surface overlay second. So we're using Bernat Blanket Yarn and you'll need a bigger hook than normal recommendation and it's an N as in Nancy a 10 millimeter size crochet hook. Usually with Bernat Blankets it's an 8 millimeter size L as in Larry. So you need a bigger size hook for the a split half double crochet stitch that we're going to be working on. So you're going to create a slip knot. Cre create an extra long tail so you can use it to sew it in afterward uh, in order to hide, hide in the ends. So let's create our first slip knot right so here. And you want to chain a total of 105. So what I'm going to do is I'm only going to do a small sample with you here on screen. But you're just going to just chain. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and go all the way to 105 for me and see me back here in just a moment. So let's begin row number 1. So row number 1 we're going to half double crochet third chain from the hook. So watch what I do. So you're going to just count back. So 1, 2 and 3. And when you're doing this what I want you to do is that I want you to make sure that in the third chain when you go to wrap it first that you get two strands that face up and one are on the bottom. It makes a difference in the final look. So what you're going to do is that you're just going to pull through and then you're just going to pull all through three. 
Now you will know, uh, you should know right now this chain uh, that we just skipped over is not gonna count as anything in the future. So it's just sitting there by itself. So let's chain one. We're gonna skip the next one on the chain and go and half double crochet into the next chain after that. And you're gonna do that all the way down your chain. Okay, so chain one, skip the next chain and half double crochet in the chain after that. So please do that all the way down your chain and I'll meet you at the end of your chain. So now that you're all the way at the end of your chain, it obviously will be longer, but you're gonna turn your work and then you're gonna begin. So you wanna keep everything looking like it's a mesh. So these spaces in between, you wanna keep them that the spaces above will stay in the same spot. So how we do this, whenever we go across, all the ones are the same and every six rows you change your color to a different color. So if you want that one exactly in the pattern, it will be six colors, or six rows of red, six rows of black and etc. And if you wanna do anything else, that's up to you. So you're gonna always then chain one only and you're gonna come down into the very first one that you started with. So right all the way down and you're gonna do a split half double crochet. So what you need to do is that you need to come down to this half double crochet and split the legs open. So yarn over and split it and go right in between the legs and go right through the project and pull through and then pull through all three. So it's a split half double crochet. Once you're satisfied with that, chain one and then go to the next one here. So let me show you the split. Do you see these two strands right down here? You are going to yarn over and just ram your hook right through there. Normally we go on the top of the stitch but in this case we're going through the legs of the half double crochet and this is gonna compact everything down and you're gonna half double crochet as normal. Then chain one and then go to the next one here. So split it and go down to, on the base. We have another tutorial just for this stitch alone for split half double crochet if you're not getting it here and then chain one and keep doing that all the way down. So you're gonna be doing split half double crochet throughout the entire project when you're doing this meshing part of it and this will compact everything down and when you do the surface overlay it's gonna match the look and so therefore this is where the optical illusion is happening because you really can't tell what is surface overlay and what is the split that is happening here. So once you get all the way to the end just chain one, go to the next one, split it. So once you get all the way to the end, what you have to watch out for the most is make sure that you don't think that there's an extra stitch there. So chain one. So you would think that there's two extra stitches here. There's not. This extra chain right in the beginning doesn't count as anything. So you're just gonna go into the very last one, split it, and then pull it through like that. See, it's pretty close. So once you get that done, you just turn your work and start the next row. So chain one always to start and then you're gonna come down and split it. The same stitch, split it. And then chain one and move across and then come down and split the next one. So that's all you're gonna do. So what I'm gonna do for you is that I'm gonna go a little bit more here and then I'm going to show you how to change color because I want you to make sure that you understand how to hide in your loose ends. I'm gonna give you a demonstration because you're gonna need that when you do the sur surface overlay as well. So you're just doing split half double crochet all the way down. Once you get used to this stitch it actually works out pretty quick. Um, it's just a matter of getting used to it. It's a new stitch for me so I'm, I'm a little sluggish at it but that doesn't mean that it's not, uh, uh, it's not impossible. It just means I just gotta have a little bit more practice. And then make sure when you come to the end, you don't think that's two stitches, it's only one. And this chain one that you created in the beginning makes it look like there's two, but just go into the last one, split it, and etc. So turn your work, chain one, come down, split it, and then chain one. So you can see this mesh would not take a lot of time because you really you're only crocheting it really every two stitches. So please do that all the way across and then I'm gonna show you how to change color. So a few minutes ago I just left you on an on a earlier row and now I have my six uh, rows complete. How can I tell? Just count the crossbars that you can see. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So every six rows this color is going to change. So to change color just trim your yarn and just pull it through like so to lock it and leave an extra long tail so that you can use a darning needle for that and turn your work and get your next color. So the mesh is gonna still stay in the same spot even for this new color that you're bringing on. So as, because I'm a little paranoid, I'm going to just create an extra long tail 
and I'm gonna use that a darning needle later and I'll show you how to do that as well and put that onto the hook with the slip knot and then come into the very top of the first one. Okay, let the tail hang on the outside so don't try to bury it as you go because it won't work and you are just going to fasten it on with the slip stitch. So just through and through. So get that out of your way. Okay, so we have to come down and we have to bury this first one here but we gotta chain one first and then bury the, do a split. So just come down and split it and you'll really notice it now because you change colors. So chain, uh, chain one and then split the next and you keep doing what you know. So how many rows are you gonna need of this? You're gonna need a total of six. So you just keep working your way splitting your half double crochets and go back and forth six rows and then you're done. So what I'm gonna do for you is that I have a larger sample that's ready for the surface overlay. So you just have to maintain your pattern. You can look at how many rows there is on the pattern itself and if you wanna change the size of your blanket you can do so as well. But make sure that you are paying attention to where it's being split in order to keep this pattern going. So make sure you get six of these rows and what I'm gonna do for you now is that I'm going to show you how to weave in your ends with the darning needle because you're gonna need to know that for this particular part as well as the surface overlay as well. Okay, so let's begin to do that next. So on the sample I'm about to share with you, I've already done my weaving of ends in. You can see it's pretty seamless and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So what we have to do is that we have to take the color that we're that we want to work with, so in this case orange, and what I want to do is that I want to bury it into the orange section only so I don't want it to bleed over to the red. Okay, so don't try to weave it into the red here and what you want to just do is kind of just go down along the side and then out. Okay, so dragging it through. Watch your tension and then go back up through a diff slightly different path for two and then back down a slightly, another slightly different path for three. So you wanna weave this in three times whenever you're doing any of these kind of projects. Okay, and this will be for all of them that you're going to do. So once you do that three times, you can safely cut it, it's gone. And then with this red one that you have here, you're gonna notice that whenever you do these red, or sorry, switching over like this, you're gonna notice that there's a little bit of a bump that you see here. This darning needle straightens it out. Okay, so if you have that, don't be worrying about it too much. So you just wanna drag this through the color. So there'll be red that's up. So I would go in the up motion along the side. But if there's not a lot, then you can just go across too. And what you wanna do is kinda pull it in a way that it still makes the pattern looks like it makes sense and then go back in the other direction for two. And then go back in the other direction a third time through a different path and then that's gone completely. See how it just made it nice and even? So you wanna do that with all of your loose ends that you have, including the very base ones here. There is no border around this thing. So even in the border or the one that you started with. And what I would want to do if I were you, just mark the bottom like I did with a stitch marker so you know which one is the bottom just in case you get confused at any point, especially if you're uh, putting down your project at any point especially if you have any um, work in progress stuff and etc. So go back and forth three times, bearing in your tail, and then you should be good to go and it should be hidden forever. That's the secret with all of this crochet stuff. Okay, and then safely cut it right down to the project. So what I want you to do then is get uh, this all completed and ready for you and then what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna show you how to do, to do the surface overlay next. So let's take a look at the sample and what we have is that I want you to pay attention. See how you got three black lines that go through the red here and then you got three red that go through here and then three black and three reds. So what does that tell you? It's in groups of three. So it'll be three surface overlays in a row that are black and then three surface overlays that are red. And so you can actually get your eyes to train to do that. So your whole idea is that when you go to start the edge, we're gonna start with red first with three times and then we're gonna start then with the black. In my case, I'm gonna mix it with my oranges and etc. And of course, if you wanna use different colors and make it really kind of odd, you're more than welcome to do so too. So let's show you how to do that part. 
So let's begin to do the surface overlay. So we have our mesh here and you can see that there's spaces in between. Okay, you see that there? They're kind of like square spaces like a grid and what we want to do is that we want to start in the first space that is existing here before the uh, just before the edge. Let's turn our project. This is the bottom of our project. We want to turn it and work in the direction that we normally crochet. So in my case I'm gonna go this way. So you can use either red or orange to start. It really kind of doesn't matter. That's kind of up to you on what you would like to do and you can use a different color if you wish. Here's the secret though. Make sure you keep an extra long tail because you're gonna need to weave that in afterward with your darning needle. So if you don't have that available to you it becomes a problem. So what I want you to do is that I want you to put it onto the hook first and I want you to go into just one loop that is existing on this a starting chain and just go into the one loop and just fasten on. So just pull through and through and leave that tail out and you're gonna get rid of that later with the darning needle. So all you're just gonna do is that you just move along these posts and you're going to slip stitch. So just pull through and through and make sure that you're just kind of easy with your tension. So go to the next bar that is in is is next for you and just slip stitch and go to the next one and slip. Do you see that? That's all you gotta do. So this makes it look like the original kind of stitches here but it's an overlay. So when it's working in the orange race so you don't really notice it so much because it's working as part of the pattern but as soon as you get into the red which I'm about to do next it's gonna be noticeable and that's what gives you the plaid look. You see that? So I'm going right around here as a slip stitch. So I would do three rows of this orange and then switch over to the red. So this will give those lines that appear to be opposite in color when you're going over the opposite color. So you're gonna go all the way to the top of your project and you are going to then slip stitch into that last starting chain or the last uh, row that you had. Okay, so don't go right around the whole thing. Just go around a loop that is existing underneath only and pull through and through. And what you can just do is just trim your yarn. And you wanna leave an extra long tail so that you can use to weave this in and you're going to wanna weave it into the color that is the same. So I'll weave it into the orange here. So what this is is that it will happen to be then on the back it'll look like it's spotted like so. So it's a, it's a one sided project. So then you just have to just kind of you know make everything look great. So then you're gonna do another one of that. So let's do another one. So off camera I just did another row of orange here. Let's do a row of red just to prove it. So every third one, so one, two, and three are going to be the same color and then we switch. So starting down here just like we did before on one loop at the beginning chain. Just fasten on with the slip stitch and then start slipping all the way up into the spaces that are available to you. So here in the orange then the red is interrupting the color from being solid giving you the plaid look and when it hits that red it's gonna disappear into the project. I think this is pretty cool. So at the show people were like coo uh, cooing over this one, this particular afghan. People just loved it and I think once they see how it's done I think they're gonna love it even more because it's really not a hard thing. You know people really get kind of antsy pants when um, you have to change a lot of colors and in this case you just go back and forth really quite easily and then you do your surface overlays afterward and then you're good to go, right? So you can see it's kind of filling in. So as it was as it was in the red it disappeared and then now we're back to the orange again. So you'll do three rows of this red then to complete this and then you'll switch back to orange. In, in the case of the pattern it's just black and red as you go and then at the end don't forget it, it's just one loop at the end. Pull through and through and you're good to go. So keep an extra long tail and then just weave in. Let me just show you how to weave in one end. I'm gonna do the uh, the other two reds here just so I have a sample, mini sample for you and then I'll be right back. 
So we're now back and I have my three rows of orange as you see and then I have my three rows of red. So you can see how it looks really quite cool when it's the same lines that go straight up and it looks like that I have crocheted it right into position. On the back it looks like it's spotted because you've done this uh, slip stitching as you went. Not a big deal but this is a one sided project. So to get rid of your final ends that you'll have to do and I would probably wait to the end. It's up to you whatever suits your lifestyle and I would feed it through a darning needle for sure because you don't want these ends popping out especially if people are gonna use this. This is a right, really nice heavy afghan. So what you're gonna do is just glide it into the stitches of the same color. Stay underneath the stitches. Stay right underneath and drag it through and when you drag it through don't be too tense with it so that you don't mess up with the edge. So just pulling it through. My needle is really sharp so it kind of scares me a bit. So just kind of pulling it through and then you're gonna go back in through a different space but in the same area going in the opposite direction. This, so that was the second time. Okay and I wanna make sure I'm doing a good job here and then I go back in the third direction. So go back and forth three times and then you can safely cut that yarn completely to the project and you'll never have to worry about it falling out especially if you're having kids wearing it. Um, you could really make a nice mangan with this like for men. I'm making this look harder than it is. <laughs> so I'm just pulling everything through like so and then you can just safely cut it right down to the project. So take your time with this and then you're gonna wanna do all your ends just like so. So just match the colors to the colors. So match it in there and then the orange you can see it pretty much ma matches anyway because it's a uh, solid there and etc. So this is how you do the buffalo plaid afghan. This is a really neat afghan and I think that you'll really enjoy it at the same time. So until next time have a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.